Hello everybody, it's Stephen and Walter here for this episode of So Chatty, episode 13 on June the 18th, 2021. And today we thought we would talk about transporting your supplies and your sewing machine to either a class or to a retreat. Now, of course, we haven't been able to go to classes or retreats for a while, but maybe that will change in the next year and we want to be prepared. So we're going to show you different things we use and we're also going to show you um, you know, not all of these things are something that you would use all at the same time, but we're going to give you some options that we have found that are fairly inexpensive as well in most cases. But before I do that, I'm going to show you a little bit of a video clip uh, showing the last time Walter and I went off to a retreat when we could do that. So that's been about two years ago now. And all the stuff we packed up for a three-day retreat. I think it was three days or was it four days? It was three days. Three days. Three-day retreat. Well, watch this. Okay, so we're about ready to load up the car for our first sewing retreat with Ultimate Sewing. And, you know, here you go. Here's a few of the things we have in bags. Doesn't look like much, does it? Walter's sewing machine. But this is one pile. This is the next pile. And yeah, not over yet because look down here. There's the other pile. We're taking three sewing machines, two tables, all kinds of things we've put together to work on. And we've got our clothes and we've got food for the snack table and you name it, we've got it. You think we were going for a year. We don't pack this much to go to Australia for a month. So, so you can see in that video clip that we took everything except the kitchen sink. And we just about didn't get it all into the back of Walter's car. And back of Walter's car, quite spacious. But we managed to get it all. Now, could we have taken less? Yes. Um, but you want to know something? You always leave something behind when you go to something like that. Now, of course, that was for a retreat. That wasn't for a class. So we're going to talk now about various methods of transporting the necessary equipment. In a class situation or a retreat, of course, you gotta have to have your sewing machine. Now, in that video, we had two sewing machines and an embroidery machine uh, with us at the time. Can you say overkill? Yeah, probably. But we were there to work, so we took our equipment. But how did we get our equipment there? Well, behind me, I will show you my bag for transporting my sewing machine. This is by a company, they're called Tuto. Yeah, Tuto. T-U-T-T-O. There is a link to this company in the show notes below. And I'm gonna warn you right now, these bags are not cheap. This bag is, I think, the largest one that they make. And I had this one when I had the 15,000. I needed a large bag. Walter has the one that's slightly smaller because it fits the 6700, which he has, which was my first machine, and that was my first bag. Same company, it's a different color. We didn't bring it down to show you because they all look about the same. Uh, they all function the same. This one's just the bigger of the two. These are great bags though, but this bag was, I think, about $300. So Yeah, at least $300, yeah. if not more. Um, they're not cheap, but think about how much you've spent on your sewing machine and you want to transport it in something that's going to protect it and also have room to add a lot of your accessories like your, your cutting mat, your pressing mat, um, other things as well. So a bag like this will do. Now, I would recommend, knowing what I know now, that you buy the bag that's one size larger than what you actually need because it gives you more room for storage. Yeah, like I mean, in the bag that I had, I a lot of times I put stuff like uh, extra fabric and stuff like that mm -hmm. in there, and uh, it was handy to have the extra space. And these are on wheels, and that's a good thing because sewing machines are heavy, and there is a handle. Yeah, it's a big um, handle. It's a big handle. Where's my handle? I usually keep the handle tucked in one of the pockets. Oh, you take it off? Yeah, I take it off oh, for storage. Oh, okay. But there's the handle. And the handle just clips right in. 
very quickly in the top, but you can see this big pouch on the side. I keep, I have a cutting mat that is a combination cutting mat and, oops, catch up my cords, cutting mat and pressing mat. And it folds up and it works really great with this bag because I can just drop it right in here. In fact, that's where it stays because I don't use this one at home. I only use it when I go to a class. There's also a pocket here on the side. Now, when I had the embroidery machine, the 15,000, this is where I would put my hoops that I would take with me. And that's something you have to think about. If you have an embroidery machine, you've got all those hoops that you need to take. There are pockets on the inside of this bag. That's the zipper top. But there is a, that's the bottom actually. But there's a zipper, it's hard to show you, but there are zipper pockets on the inside. There are pockets on the ends. Both ends have pockets. Watch your image. You're pulling your cord. Pulling my cord. <laughs> and uh, more pockets here and here. Oh, I have things in here. Painter's tape and Band-Aids. Oh, never should go leave home without Band-Aids. You never know, especially the way I am. And another big pocket here. So this is a really great bag. There's a lot of storage in here as well. But the beauty of these bags are when you are not using it, you can fold it up. And there's these little brackets on the side that just pop up. Make sure my floor is up. Why am I having a problem? Okay. <laughs> Why am I having a problem? I haven't done this in a while. What's uh, blocking me? Oh, is the bottom in the bottom? No, bottom's up on the edge. There's a bottom that folds down inside. And now I've got that up. So why can't I? It figures on camera. I can't get it to fold. I don't know why I'm not getting it to fold up. <laughs> a comedy of errors. Second. It will fold up, trust me. Well, I don't know what's going on. Is there stuff in your pockets at the end that causing it to... No. It's not. We'll be back. Okay, I'm an idiot. The reason I couldn't get to fold up is I forgot there. Are, this is how long ago it has been since I have used this. Okay. There are two flaps down here that crisscross each other for the bottom. They both have to come up. I had one up, forgot there's a second one. Now that it's up. I told you to do this off camera first. Well, now people can see there. Okay, here we. <laughs> Thing dropped accidentally in. It's the top one that's not folding in. Yeah. What, what the? <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Why am I having problems? We'll be back. Double idiot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it would help if I push these little brackets on the side down instead of trying to push them up because they don't go up. It's been two years. I haven't used this thing in two years and it's not that difficult. So you see when it's all together, it does fold up just like that <laughs> and then you can slide it and where I keep it is underneath my sewing uh, table here that we're sitting in front of at the moment but it does fold up and it's very easy to so I was no unfold. help either because I have one upstairs and I use it to store stuff so <laughs> so I've never folded it so up. yours is always open yeah but yeah 
They are very good bags. They are worth the money. They take a lot of wear and tear and they do fold up. <laughs> okay, and when you, you can, do it right. <laughs> you can see that when you do it right, it works. Yeah, uh, so that was your little comedy stint for the day. Um, <laughs> if you could see this up close, you can see some wear marks on it. You're going to get that on your bags because it's going to run into things. You're going to bump it into things, but it's still, it's nylon, a very heavy nylon and it's all lined inside as well. So yeah, they're a good bag. I think they are considered one of the best bags on the market for sewing machine transportation. Now, yes, you can buy cheaper bags. And I have one and I forgot to dig it out to show it to you today because it's buried way back in there. I bought it for the last retreat we went to, um, not to hold a sewing machine, or actually, yeah, I had my little sewing machine. And I, because Walter was coming, he was bringing his bag, so I didn't have another transporting bag for my other sewing machine, my little one uh, that I had at the time. So I bought this cheap bag, and it is, it is cheap. The only thing I can say about it, that it was about 60 bucks, and um, I don't even know what the make of it is, I don't recommend those ones. You get what you pay for. Uh, I use it actually to carry fabric in it and that's about it. So it's worth the money to invest. If you're going to a lot of retreats, if you're going to a lot of classes, spend the money, get a decent bag. Okay, so that's the Tuto bag. It's a weird name. I've got, got a link to the company in the show notes below. And they have a, a, a wide variety of styles as well. And they have bags to take your serger. If you have a Janome 550E uh, machine, they uh, do not have a bag. They do not have a bag. And apparently Janome makes a bag, but I haven't really looked into it too carefully because I've read mixed reviews yeah. as to whether that bag is really any good or not. So um, I've just been port, uh, taking it without a bag, which it's a little bit of a nuisance. It's mainly because of the um, embroidery arm it takes up so much space. Yeah, you can't take the embroidery arm off. And so I've looked at those bags. They're they're not cheap. They're about 300 bucks yeah. or something for them. But they're huge. They're as wide as they're great the big. arm. Yeah, they're really big. And I, so you might have trouble getting it through a door. Yeah. So uh, I, I haven't really looked into it. I haven't really asked about it. I haven't really looked into it. So, And I don't transport my uh, embroidery machine that often. So. No. See, when I had the 15,000, you could take the arm off of it. It had its own little carrying case for it. And it, because it was a combination embroidery and sewing machine, whereas the 550E is just an embroidery machine, um, I could get everything in this bag. Well, I couldn't get the embroidery arm. It had its own special bag, but I could put it on top. And there's actually straps as well that come with this bag that you can tie things on top of it, which is kind of good when you're moving it around. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of other stuff. So let's talk about how to transport other stuff or how we have done it. Well, let's say you're going to a class, okay? Now, the one thing about classrooms, at least the ones I've been in, well, the only one I've been in is Ultimate Sewing. Ultimate Sewing's classroom is very tiny. You are basically tripping over people in there. So you want to be very efficient in the way you transport what you want to take. And you probably want to take only the bare necessities. Now, of course, most classrooms provide an iron and an ironing board, but I don't like uh, using the class because there's always somebody sitting at the ironing board who's pressing themselves to oblivion. You know, the kind of person, they're just not pressing their seams, they're like doing their laundry at the same time and you stand there and you wait. So I take my own little iron, travel iron, which I've shown in a previous version of this. And to transport that, I have one of these. Now, this is one of those bags. They're a dime a dozen. You can make them yourself. The little zippered pouch, they're like a cosmetic bag or a men, man's shaving kit bag. And that's all this is. In fact, I made this out of some tea towels that came from Australia that I had left over from some other projects. But what I did with this bag was I lined it with a Teflon sheet. A Teflon sheet is actually, they're known as a non-stick craft sheet. Ranger makes them, that's a crafting uh, company. Um, you just do a search on Amazon for non-stick craft sheet, you'll find them. 
Um, they're not that expensive and you can cut it down and put it in between the lining and your outside fabric of your bag when you're making it. And it does make your bag more heat resistant. Now, why do you want to be heat resistant? Because in a class situation, oftentimes I'm taking a class, when my class is over, there's only maybe a half an hour between the next class that somebody else is coming in. And of course, people always come early and everybody's biting at the chomp to get in, get their stuff set up and get ready for the class. And I don't want to hold people up, but I can't wait for my iron to cool down completely because it takes a long time. At least with the little Rowenta, that iron is still hot 20 minutes to 30 minutes after I've unplugged it and shut it off. Um, so I throw it in this bag. The bag does get hot. It, go, it's, it goes through a little bit, but it won't burn anything. Like if you put it in your bag with your sewing machine and it gets leaned up against like a plastic ruler or something, it might be hot enough to actually melt your ruler. This protects it from getting having that problem. As I said, I made this myself. Now, please don't ask me for a pattern on how Actually, to do this. all I did was I took a little Rowenta bag that we've got and I yeah. stuck a silicone lining in the bottom of it. There you go. If you buy one <laughs> machine that already comes with a, or it, that, a iron... that little Rowenta already comes with a bag. Yeah, I know. I didn't like it. I like this one better. Yeah, well, I'm lazy. Well, fine. <laughs> but you can make your own. But the reason I'm not going to tell you how to do this, I'm not going to give you a tutorial. This is a basic bag. You can find the pattern for these type of bags everywhere. There's probably a free And there's free somewhere. ones all over. You All you need to do is when you're putting your lining in the bag with your main fabric, just put this Teflon sheet in between. Um, you might be able to even use Insulbrite as well. Insulbrite is a type of batting that has uh, what looks like tin foil on one side of it. Again, it's a heat resistant kind of thing. You can put, you could probably use that as well. But it does keep everything nice, neat, and tidy. And there's usually enough room in this bag that if you want to throw in uh, things that, you know, go along like, um, uh, you know, any press, a stiletto or something, if you're, you know, you're pressing your seams open or maybe a little bottle of stuff, you know, for flattening your seams like soak or something like that, you can probably get them in this bag. And, you know, those of you that are into bag making, I'm sure you could make one of these bags maybe slightly bigger with a pocket on the side for extra things. It's all about compact storage. The more you can get into something, uh, the better. So that's what I use for transporting an iron. Now, other things. Okay, let's talk. You've seen this already, but I'm going to show it to you again. This is the in control bag. That's what's called by Annie. I put a link to the pattern uh, in the show notes below. And this is great because this bag, you can probably get in this one bag, everything you possibly need for a class or even for a retreat in terms of your tools, your scissors, your marking tools, small rulers, anything you want to use for pressing, as well like soak or Mary Ann's best Mary Allen's best press or anything like that because it's got lots of little pockets as you've seen it before and on the end so really it's small but it's compact and can hold probably the bulk of all your notions in here the best part of one of these little bags is it, you can sit it right on your work table just like that and everything's right there on your fingertips and it's easy to move around. So again, this is something that I made. You can buy ones, they're called Yazzy bags. Yazzy bags has been around for about 30 years. They have high quality stuff. Uh, they have bags of all sorts and sizes and they're all very expensive, but they are very well made they're and well designed. There are other alternatives too. Yes, there are. And we're coming to those alternatives in a minute. So. The one other thing that I really like that I take to classes with me, I made this. This is a tool caddy. It's, you will find, I put a link to a pattern. The pattern is about $2.50 for making one of these. No, I'm not going to do a tutorial. Sorry, very, very easy to make. You need to go to the dollar store and buy yourself, you see that little plastic part? One of those five by seven 
uh, plastic frames, you know, where you photo slip frame. a picture in photo frame. And that's the support. And that's what makes it stand up. Now, I use this all the time when I go, I have a couple of these actually that I made. This one I have sits permanently you know, next to my sewing machine because this has a lot of my fancy scissors for embroidery work and things like that. But it just sits right up like that, put marking pins in, small rulers, some scissors, the whole bit, and it's really, really convenient. And it doesn't take up much room when you're packing it away. So you can Put it in your bag right there so those are some of the things another thing is i haven't made one of these yet but this is by by annie bags by annie a place for everything 2.0 this is my next project i'm going to make one of these this has all kinds of space in it for tools um small pieces of fabric um, other things these inside parts apparently detach they come out um it looks like a really great bag. I know it's very, very popular. And you can see at the bottom how it all zips up into a little handy carrying case. And it's not that big. So I will show this to you when I, whenever I get it done. Don't be holding your breath for a while, okay? Because it's not going to be shown, not going to be showing it to you next week. Um, but I've put the link to this pattern in the show notes as well. Okay, so that takes us to other alternatives. Now, all these things I've shown you so far are pricey, all right? That's your big expense right there. Um, Time-wise and material-wise, these things get a little pricey too, as well. But let's say, let's say you don't want to make your own bags and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg. Well, there's cheaper alternatives. Let me just show you what you can find in your dollar store. Now you know, everybody knows. If you go to a dollar store, you can find all kinds of things that you can repurpose for another use, if you use your imagination. They had a whole bunch of these one time I was in the dollar store. I don't know what they're meant for, but they've got this mesh top to it. They have a zipper enclosure that goes around three sides of it, and it's made of nylon. Yes, it's not the best nylon in the world, but what do I use these for? You'd be surprised how much fabric you can put in one of these because they sort of stretch out and you can pack them into your sewing bag. And if you're doing it with fabric, you can kind of squish it around in odd spots and get it to work. But you could also put in your tools and things like that. Now, the one disadvantage of this is if that bothers you, are there aren't any straps inside of this to hold your tools really neatly, but you know, Get yourself a little Velcro, sew it in, or some elastic, and you could do your own thing with that as well. So, you know, I think it cost, well, I bought it at the dollar store, but I know it cost about $2. And I bought a bunch of these, along with these from the dollar store. This is a net wash bag for fine your fine washables, I guess. I don't know, put your bra on it or something. I don't know, how do you wash a bra? but uh, never really had to. They're not the best quality. You do have to be careful with it. It could probably rip, but for a buck, they're almost disposable. It's got a zipper closure, fabric. You can put your fabric in there. You can put all your pieces for a project in there. And it's got a certain amount of expansion to it because it's somewhat stretchy. And, you know, I bought a bunch of them because they were a dollar. Um, so that's an alternative too. Again, my whole point of all of this is to show you to keep things organized because who wants to go in the bottom of a big bag, which we're gonna show you in a minute, and go hunting for everything because you can never find anything in the bag. So if you can get something that has pockets in it, zippers to keep everything secure so they're not falling out all over the place, um, a good size so they're not taking up all your workspace, then why not? So, what do I put my projects in? Well, when you're going to a class or going to a retreat, it's a good idea to do some organization before you go. Put everything you're going to be working on in one spot. These plastic boxes, you get them at Michael's, 
in other places. I think they're $6.99 now. They used to be like about $4.99, but they've gone up. They're actually called a scrapbook paper box. They're meant for scrapbookers. Scrapbook case says it right on here. But I use them for all my projects. And I'm looking at a whole row of them just uh, beyond the camera over there. With, and I label them with my label maker so I know what I've got in them, what uh, project. And they pretty much hold almost everything I need for a project in most cases. Um, actually, they actually hold, uh, they're tall enough that you can put your uh, 1,000 millimeter embroidery threads in there too. Yeah. So. so that's a good way to keep yourself organized. Um, especially when you're in a class and you got to have this piece and you got to have that piece out, going hunting for it, easy enough to not find what you need and then get all frustrated and behind in the class. So I very much love these. I cannot live without them. Okay, so next thing is Walter. Walter's okay, going to show now you. I, I have an alternative bag I yeah. use. Now I should have cleaned it out before I came up here, but um, I went to, before I did sewing, I was doing stained glass and I needed a bag for that as well. So I bought one of these bags for my stained glass. And so when we went to sewing, I still need a tool bag for my for my tools for sewing. So what do I do? I go to Home Depot and I buy a tool bag. They aren't that expensive. They're good quality. They've got tons of pockets, right? They've got tons of pockets. You've got pockets on there, There's pockets on the inside to keep your pencils and scissors and all kinds of other stuff in here. Um, I have a, a pocket where I keep my uh, flatter spray. I've got other, uh, pockets that open up here and what do we pay for something like this about 35 or 40 dollars well that's a bargain right i mean it's not worth making your own sure it's not pretty well actually i don't think it's so bad it's not a it's not a really fancy bag that looks like thing and then when i go to a, uh, go to my class now i can't it's too big to put on a, a a table but what i do is i sit it on top of my sewing machine bag and it's right there, right next to my, when I'm sewing and, and I can just turn around and take stuff out of it. I can carry tons of stuff in here and I do. Well, you're not, you're not in the camera. I carry tons of stuff in here and I do. It's usually right, right now it's my junk bag because I don't, I haven't been going to classes, but I keep everything that I need in there. Now, so, and now what else you can buy there, which I, I haven't bought yet, but you can buy smaller bags that are similar to this. Again, they're, they're basic black or whatever. And they're little square bags meant just to hold tools like screwdrivers and things like that. Well, put your scissors in there instead or screwdriver instead of screwdrivers yeah. and stuff. Now, one thing about this big bag he has here, it's also made out of nylon, but it's very, very strong nylon. It's well made. It's got it. Hold it back up here. We're looking down there. They can't see down there. It's got a very strong zipper to it closes right up the carry handles did it come with a shoulder hand shoulder strap uh i may have come with a shoulder strap i no. have never used it though yeah I, I it does come with uh, loops for a shoulder strap oh okay so but i don't recall if i ever if i took it off or the not. reason i mentioned shoulder straps is because if you're lugging your stuff into a store how many trips do you want to make back out to your car I mean, I'm a real pack horse. If I can get them over both shoulders, one on my back and dragging it along uh, with my and cart, then okay good. With, you know, each manufacturer of tools makes one of these kind of bags. Mm -hmm. This is just a generic one that I just went in and looked for the one that had the most pockets and that was the most reasonable price. So, uh, and for 35 I bucks? It, I think I bought it at Home Depot. So, I mean, um, it's great little bag for taking stuff to classes. You, and like I said, you can buy smaller, all different sizes of bags mm. for people that carry their tools. And a lot of people don't think about going to like uh, uh, something like Home Depot or whatever to pick up a bag like this. They're all looking in sewing stores. And sure, sewing stores sell bags like these too. At yeah, twice the price. Twice, two, three times the price. And yeah, and they look a little prettier. They might be pink, but yeah. these aren't pink, so. Like, for a man, that's fine. But you know, I don't get uptight about the color. I mean, I got a purple bag there, and my other bag that Walter uses now is a teal. Um, well, I kind of like those colors, but that's not what I bought them for. I bought them for the transportation and for, you know, 
lugging my stuff. I don't care what they look like color-wise. If it really bothers you, stick on some embroidery or some appliques or something like that. Um, I have yet to say, see anybody. Uh, you're, okay, that's good. Your microphone oh, fell no. off. Now, what, I wonder how the sound came uh -huh. out there. Well, there, there's no clip on it now. Yeah, it's on your shirt. Oh. Excuse us. This is a day full of disasters. So hopefully <laughs> you heard what he had to say. Okay, on that. I, I will do something in the post-editing here uh, with that. Anyways, what I was saying about these bags and everything, one thing that I will do if I get a big bag like that is I put smaller bags inside of it. I'm kind of like that. I like to have... It's not that big of a bag. Yeah, but I could get smaller bags in well, it. Well, actually, I do put... I could get bags like this in it. I do put things like my needles. I keep my needles all in a, in a little Ziploc bag. Ah, let's talk about Ziploc bags, shall we? Um, or the ones you get at the dollar store, the zipper bags or whatever. Uh, don't underestimate their potential for transporting and organizing your equipment as well. As Walter says, he keeps his needles and things in one of those. I have another bag where I keep all my uh, rotary blades in. Yep. And you can get as elaborate with that kind of setup as you want because you can go online and you can find patterns for making little, little bags like for that kind of thing with zippers and the whole bit. The reason I like bags within a bag is because I can then sort out like if uh, if this has my glues or this has my little ins little scissors or something like that i label them i label everything um and i look at my bag and go oh yeah there they are there they're in that they're not laying loose where they can get lost or buried in the bottom of your bag with other things on top of them it depends on your level of organization or how anally retentive you might be i'm very anally retentive so i have all that kind of stuff all right, so of course, then there's the everyday tote bag. And everybody makes tote bags, right? Uh, if you're into sewing, you've probably made a tote bag or two. So show them your tote bags. Okay, so I've just been making fairly simple bag, um, to fairly sturdy, um, to, to put fabric in and stuff like that when I, I put embroidery on the outside and on the back. And my bags all have Actually, I was using a purse bag pattern to do this, and uh, I uh, have like uh, pockets on the outside, and there aren't any pockets on the inside, but you know, it's, it's a huge bag. You can carry all kinds of stuff in it. You can see what size it is for, for me. Now, how I made this bag, I was looking for bag patterns and stuff like that, but I took a class to make a, uh, a purse. I took a class to make a purse. I didn't really want a purse, but I wanted to know how to make a bag. So I, I created this bag, which looks very similar to my big bag. Only difference is this one has a zipper in the front and it has pockets on the inside, but uh, it looks very similar. So I took this pattern and I just made all the pieces bigger yeah. to make my big bag, right? So, and my bag has, uh, my big bag, I use a f uh, fat quarter on each panel on the side and on the inside, I have another fat quarter. And uh, uh, so I have a huge bag for that, so. So basically what he's saying is you can adapt patterns you may already have to suit your purposes. Um, I like the idea of these types of bags with a pocket on the outside, and I like the idea of them with pockets on the inside as well, which you have in the small purse version. Yeah, I didn't put pockets on the inside there because I didn't. Th I think the bag was too deep, I thought, for pockets on the inside. And in some designs, you can make bags that have a divider in the middle of it yeah. too. So anything. I like pockets. I like a lot of pockets because it just keeps my stuff, as I said before, all organized and it's not laying in the bottom of my bag. So and I... That, this, this bag pattern was what? The Riviera pattern? Or yeah, I think you're, so. You're going to add it to the show notes at the bottom. Yeah. But all I did was you get a bag pattern that you like and all you do is modify the size of the pieces. So you see this one is a very basic tote that I made, but I modified the pattern and put pockets on the inside and very large pockets. So I can get quite a bit in one of these bags. And because you make it yourself, you know exactly how sturdy it's going to be. And if you are going to be carrying heavy stuff in it, you can reinforce your straps 
as you see fit too. So customize yeah. it for your like needs. My straps, the way I reinforce them is they're uh, sewn on the inside part of the bag and uh, they're in sewn all the way down to the bottom. So <laughs> the, if anything will happen is that the bag will rip before the straps will fall off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now I did go to a class and I made a bag like this. This is a, a, a form of a messenger bag. It's out of denim, I'll never do that again. This was a very complicated class because this is all lined inside. It's got snap, they're actually magnetic snaps. Pockets on the outside, another pocket here, and it's got a shoulder strap. I wouldn't use this kind of bag to take to a class. And there's a reason. This bag is not meant for that kind of thing. And I just want to show you that to say why. It is not deep enough. It is not wide enough. Although it has a pocket on the inside as well, you just can't get that much in it. But it's not designed for that. It's designed for, you know, your tablet, a wallet. There's a pocket on the back side too. It has its purposes, but it's, I don't think this would be a good bag for taking stuff to a class, unless you are going very bare minimal with it. However, a bag like this would be ideal. This is a bag that is designed to be an overnight bag, basically. It's got nice fancy clasps on it. I did make this one as well. Um, this was looks more complicated than it was to make. It's got pocket here, but it has something very unique. It has this strap. What's this strap for? This is meant as an overnight bag or as an addition to your suitcase. Your handle comes up on your suitcase. This fits over the handle. You sit it on top of your suitcase. It's secure as you're going through the airport or wherever. However, if you have one of these, where is it there, this, and I don't have the handle on it right now, you can do the same thing. Put this on top of that bag, put this over the handle, it keeps it secure so you're not worried about it tipping off and falling over. So I think that's a nice feature. Um, inside this bag, and you notice it's got a really big zipper, so it opens up very much like the bag Walter had from the hardware store from Home Depot. So you see, big gap. You can get a lot in this. Now, the one thing this bag doesn't have is pockets on the inside. But you can get a whole lot of stuff in it. And I think you can even get you could actually get at least one, possibly two of those plastic things in one of these bags too. So, yeah, this one I'm really happy with this one because I like the way it turned out and everything. I was really happy with it. Now, this one does not have a reinforced bottom, but it does have a square bottom and that's easy to reinforce it. You can just take a piece of uh, corrugated cardboard or a, a thin piece of wood, make a sleeve for it. Uh, that's the dimensions of the bo bottom I use, and drop uh, it in. I use Pellon Peltex at yeah. the bottom of my, it's a very stiff product that Pellon sells. Yeah, so you could use that. And actually these bags too have something like that in the bottom of it as well. Just keeps them a little bit square and allows them to stand up so they're not flopping all over the place. So really, I can't think of anything else uh, for that um, as far as transporting. But I mean, use your imagination. You don't have to buy them at a, at a quilt store unless you see something there you really like and you want. Um, sure, by all means. You can find lots of things online. And if you like making bags, what the heck? Go to Bags by Annie. They seem to be the best spot because she has got bags for everything. And Yazzie uh, as well. But as I said, you're gonna pay for Yazzie. They're not cheap. I do not own a Yazzie bag and I only recently came across them uh, from another YouTube. And I looked into what their bags, and yeah, their bags look great. And they're very well designed, um, but they're also pretty pricey as well so it's up to you how much you want to spend on you know getting your stuff to your retreat or to your class okay so i think that's all we want to say right now about you can think of anything else that we usually take to a class that uh like for carrying things uh rulers 
Transporting your rulers can be a bit of a problem, but if you have a bag like this, not that one, the this one. Yeah, you can put rulers in there to a maximum yep. size. Yeah, um, you, well, you can get a 24 inch ruler in here yeah. as well. And you can get several rulers in it. In uh, that in bag you can, but yeah. in my bag you can't. No, yours is a little smaller. So yeah, uh, now speaking of rulers, this is just an aside, I digress. There is a, a ruler you can buy that folds in, into threes. I wouldn't recommend it. Now I know there's other people out there swear by them, but there's two reasons I don't like that ruler and I can't show you mine because it's busted. And that was the first thing. The hinges on it are very fragile. They're just a piece of tape pretty much and back and forth they do snap off. The other thing I don't like is where the gap is between the, the pieces of the ruler on the edge, you get a bump. When you're cutting your fabric, you can get a bump. Now, I've had people argue with me about that and say, you're just not doing it right. Yeah, I did it right. And I still got the little wow, didn't like it. They weren't cheap. So it's up to the individual. Maybe some of you have that ruler and you love it. But I found, no, I'd rather go with a solid piece ruler. So I need something to carry it in, bigger bag. Um, okay, so that takes us to, just before we finish up here, um, I had a subscriber question and this has nothing to do with storage or bags or anything like that. It has to do with some terminology. Um, she wanted to know, she said she wasn't a quilter. Well, actually I'll read the email. She says, can you explain what the difference is between a charm pack jelly roll and a cake stack? Since I'm not really a quilter, I'm not familiar with these terms. Um, this was, uh, Adrian Bennett. And yeah, if you're not a quilter, you probably aren't familiar with these terms and they sound like something from a, a bakery. Um, she called one a cake stack. Well, a cake stack, actually it's not called a cake stack, it's called a layer cake, and that's a layer cake. They're 10 inch squares, they come in a pack, they all coordinate uh, usually, and they call that a layer cake. Um, a jelly roll are two and a half inch strips all done up in a roll. Usually there's, well, they come in different sizes. This one I think has 42 or 44 strips uh, with the fabric two and a half inches wide. You can get ones that are half this size as well. And then there's things called charm packs and they're five inch squares. You can get a mini charm pack and they're two and a half inch squares. Why are all these things called this? Jelly rolls and layer cakes are actually terms that I think were created by one of the fabric companies, Moda, I think. I could be wrong about that. So in a sense, they are trademark names, but they have caught on in the quilting industry. And so anytime we see a roll of two and a half inch strips, we call it a jelly roll. Anytime we see a whole, a flat of 10 inch squares, we call it a layer cake. And anytime we see five inch squares in a package, we call them a charm pack. Um, that's just the way they are. Um, others, may just call them a strip pack. They may call them, you know, five inch square pack or something like that. But those are the common terms and that explains that. But that got me thinking, and I think on our next episode, we're going to do this, terminology. Um, we throw around a lot of terms and figure that people know what we're talking about. And that email, it dawned on me, no. Uh, if you're not a quilter or if you're somebody who doesn't do a lot of sewing, well, I know that the people that are uh, the garment sewing that have not had any quilting experience at all um, would never have known uh, about. I, I talked about precuts before, and the layer cake and, and uh, jelly rolls, jelly rolls are, are precuts, pre right? And when I said precuts, I I uh, showed them I had a, a, a charm pack and in my desk, and I uh, pulled it out and I said, "See, this is a precut." And uh, they, they didn't realize that you, they even existed, that you could get something yeah. like that. And he mentions terms all the time when he's talking about what he's sewing. And I don't know, like, what's a French seam? What's a, what's a cover stitch? Yeah, what's, what's a, you know, what, what is a um, flat felt seam? Yeah, that was when he's talking about the other day. I had no idea what that is because I don't use those things in what I do. So next week, we're going to have a little challenge. We're each going to make up a list of terms from our perspective uh, areas of sewing, mine from quilting, his from garment, and we're going to have a little contest. And 
we're going to see how many terms each one of us know. And it's hope from that that maybe we'll, you know, for some of you that don't know all the terminology either, that that will clear up the cloud of mystery around all of those for you too. So that's what we're going to do next week. And I'm going to call it Terminology 101 because maybe someday we'll do a more advanced I'll one. I'll have to I think don't about that because, yeah. I mean, there's things that are natural to me that I don't really... Well, you got a week to figure it out. So figure it out. Uh, and we'll talk about that next week. Okay, so just before we go, uh, one more thing, interviews. Uh, I've gotten a lot of nice comments. People seem to be enjoying the interviews I'm doing with people who watch us on a regular basis. Uh, but I've to date, I have one more interview that I have ready to go. It'll go up next week, but I don't have any others. So I need to interview people. Don't be shy. It's painless. I'm going to make you look good no matter who you are. Okay? Um, it is not my intent to put you on the spot and embarrass you. Not at all. You'll get questions in advance that you can alter and prep for whatever way you see fit. It's very relaxed. It's very informal. And from the feedback I've gotten back from the three people I have already interviewed, they really enjoyed the experience. And one person in particular was very apprehensive about being interviewed. And at the end of it, she came out and she says, well, she says, I had nothing to be afraid of there. I had a lot of fun. And that's the point. But I need more people. So please reach out to me. Email address is in the show notes. And let me know you're interested. And I will send you all the information about about it and we'll set up a time that's mutually good for both of us and away we'll go and it'll be done via zoom so please do okay anything you want to finish off with anything you want to say any thoughts do you think no i don't think <laughs> no okay i mean it, what i sometimes do is a in a pinch i'll, I'll grab a a uh, plastic bag and throw something in it for storage. So yeah, he does the same thing with his underwear and socks uh, <laughs> when we go away. Uh, so anyways, okay, well, I think that's it. Thank you for joining us uh, today and we'll see you next week for another episode of So Chatty. Bye for now. Bye.